I just, uh, I started reading when I was just a kid. I, I, I needed something to feed my mind. And um, I wanted, I had all the suffering and I didn't have a way to escape. Books were my escape. That's why I love books so much. It's like I could, I could learn from somebody from another century. I could learn by another person's life experience. And then I started to do some speaking and touching people that way. But honestly, it's never been motivation for me. It's always been strategy because motivation without strategy is like a warm bath. You know, you should take a bath and you're gonna be dirty regularly. You need inspiration. But it's strategy too. But I know you're never going to hear the strategy unless we can move you. I mean, I do a weekend that's 50 hours. So Oprah comes and says, Tony, I love you to death, but no one sits for more than three hours. I can't do it. And 12 hours later, she's staying in her chair, looking at the camera, going, this is one of the greatest experiences of my life. Or Usher, you know, comes to me and says, Tony, I can't do 50 hours, dude. I just can't. You know, 50 hours later, he's like, I laugh my ass off. This is one of the most incredible experiences of my life. So I've learned a way to refine the process to move people so that they act. If you just get pumped up, what good does it have? So this book is all these specific strategies. Here's what to do. Here's what Ray Dalio says, largest hedge fund on earth. I say to him, don't inspire me. Tell me, if your kids couldn't get any of your money, not on a dime, and you were gonna show them what to do, what would you show them? What would you tell them? He said, Tony, I've spent 10 years of my life refining this process. All my money's in it. It's called my all weather strategy because it works and stock market goes up or down. And he said, I've tested it back to 1925. It makes money 85% of the time. So he tells me the strategy is quite complex. And when you show it to the average financial person, they go, oh, that'll never work. Because they they're not Ray Dalio. They haven't figured out $160 billion to manage. It takes $5 billion 10 years ago, net worth, and $100 million for him to talk to you. Now he won't do that for even that for any amount of money. But he spent three hours with me. At the end, he shows me this formula. I said, you know what? This is great, but you showed me how to make a chocolate cake. It's very inspiring. Um, you said use some chocolate, use some sugar. <laughs> but I need, the, I need the actual numbers or no one's gonna be able to act on this. They're never gonna figure this out on their own. And he said, Tony, that's my secret sauce. So that's how I get billions of dollars. I said, yeah, but you've not taken money in 10 years. I said, you're a generous man. You've given what, half of your net worth you're gonna give away? Give me the formula, give it to me. Just tease it. He gave it to me, it's in the book. It's one of the formulas. And when you test it over the last 75 years, it's been successful 85% of the year, the time, year by year. And the yes. times it's lost, it only lost 1.6 percent on average. The biggest loss was less than four percent in a world where the markets go up 50 percent down. Back this book's going to make people money. I will make people money. The beautiful part of it is they don't have to pick Ray. They can decide who they want to follow because I give you the strategies of all the best people. The energy. Do you ever lose your energy? Do you ever get I, down? Well, sure. I get exhausted. I get mad. I, you know, I get tired. I'm, I'm a human being, but it's like an athlete. You know, you built your muscle, so it's there for you. It doesn't last. Like what used to last when I was a kid, you know, a month might last me a few minutes or an hour, you know, something of that nature. Don't ask for it to change out there. Ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable wind. We call that naive. Don't ask for better seed, better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better and be able to take care of your own responsibilities. Get better. Learn how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges that I know I'm gonna face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you, how strong you're gonna be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. First talk I gave, I stood up. My mind sat back down. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. I stood up and I did it again. And I did it again and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared and I did it when I didn't want to and I did it when I was ill. And I did it when it didn't work well and I didn't did it when they didn't appreciate it. And I didn't a lot of times when I didn't know much what I was doing. I just did it anyway. And now all these years later, I'm asked to walk on this stage with the greatest introduction I've ever had, greatest response and welcome I've ever had, the greatest opportunity I've ever had to touch this many lives with a mixture of words and heart and soul. I got better. I got better day by day and week by week and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach 
until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn. The money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger. Get better. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage. Get better, get wiser, get stronger. So, if you own your failure, you'll own your success. So what is personal growth? You know, I think about entrepreneurship. Some of us are in this to do social good and make money. Some of us are into this for political causes and make money. Some of us are just here to make money. But we all have different motivations. So we all define growth differently. Sometimes it's social to me, it could be personal, it could be financial, it could be a bigger house, a bigger car. Whatever it is, we all define it differently. But what is common about growth? If you do tomorrow what you did today, you will get tomorrow what you got today. Benjamin Franklin, that is the definition of not growing, isn't it? If you do tomorrow what you did today, you didn't grow, did you? Then you get tomorrow what you got today. You didn't grow, did you? So there it is. If you do it the same tomorrow, there's no growth. If you attain the same result tomorrow, there's no growth. So how do we get better every day, every hour? How do we find those resources? How do we find the energy, the knowledge to do that? That's what I want to talk about. So I want to change your mindset. Insanity, you've seen this before, is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. You know, years ago, I used to own 17 restaurants and bars in a bunch of states. And every September, I'd go to the property and the GMs would make a presentation and give me their business plan for the year. And I'd read through the business plan and would say, oh, gonna raise sales by 20% in six months. Awesome. Tells me breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, booze, wine, I'm in. Then next year I come back, 20% in six months, lunch, breakfast. And I realize, wait a minute, this is the same shit I read last year, said by the same people who said it last year, and I'm supposed to get on a plane and feel good about this. So what does 20% in six months mean? Well, does anything happen next month? What about two months from now, three months from now? When does something happen? Not till the last day. Five months and 29 days, I gotta sweat bullets. What the hell does 20% in six months mean? How do you get your arms around that? How do you turn it into something that's meaningful in business? So, open your mind and play with me for a moment. What business are you in? What business do you want to be in? Retail, customer service, consumer, B2B? What business are you in? I love it when people say, oh, I'm in retail, uh, I'm in medical devices, I'm in uh... Every one of these is wrong. You see, it doesn't matter what business we're in. We don't sell products, we don't sell services, we don't sell advice, and we don't sell solutions. All of that is textbook bull. Everything we do is a process, never a result. That process must establish an emotional reaction. That reaction is our product. So, let me be a restaurant guy for a minute. The cook in the kitchen is making an entree, right? He thinks that's the product. So the entree comes out to the table, goes on a table, one of two things happens. Either you sit up and look at it and react to it, or nothing happens. If nothing happens, that business is stuck in mediocrity forever. So, is the product the plate of food or the reaction that the guest had to the plate of food? Which is the product? The reaction is the product, isn't it? You see, I'll redesign that plate 30 times until you sit up. Because I understand that the product is the way you react to things. We can all buy cell phones from any company. It's the way we react to the product that matters. It's presentation, it's emotion, it's perceived value, far more than absolute value. The fact of the matter is, everything we do must create reactions. Those reactions drive frequency, drive spend and fuel the economy of our country and he or she who creates the best reaction wins